Okay, ladies and gentlemen, ADS Play 101 here. This is my review of Octopath Traveler. You know, I'm not usually on cam like I normally would be, but I figured, you know, hey, why don't I just do a quick review since I just finished the game? So, Octopath Traveler is a tale of eight different people that are on their quest for their own personal redemption. Um, there is Ter Trissa, the merchant, Hannah, the hunter, Elfin, the apothecary, or the doctor, basically, that is what they called him back then, Ophelia, the cleric, Cyrus, the scholar, Therian, the thief, Alberic, the warrior, and Primrose, the dancer. And in the beginning of the game, you get to decide whether or not, um, which one you get to pick. And that's going to be the main story of uh, the game. It, it, it all depends on which character you pick. You can pick anybody who's going to be the main focus, right? Because once you complete their story, the credits is going to roll. And technically, that will be the quote-unquote end of the game. But you can complete, but you go on to complete everybody else's side story. And you learn more about them as time goes on. You know, with Primrose, she's a dancer. She's actually a princess from a royal house called Azelheart. And, you know, her father was killed by this group of people. Um, and she's going on a quest for revenge to avenge her father. With Ulbrich, you know, he's a knight from a kingdom. And uh, due to a friend betraying him, his king ended up getting killed and the kingdom fell. Therian, he was a thief that was trying to break into uh, another uh, royal family's house. Ended up getting blackmailed by said royal family or, and to collect treasures known as the Dragon Eyes in order for him to release this bangle, which calls the Fool's Bangle, and um, which is like a public. Uh, display of shame for a thief you know like you've gotten caught basically uh cyrus he's on a quest to retrieve this um evil tome known as the far reaches of hell to prevent it from falling into evil hands ophelia she's a cleric on the mission to relight the flames of basically like the flames of light and uh at her sister's um steed uh, Alfin, he's a traveling apothecary trying to travel the world to prevent others from getting sick. Hannah, she's on a quest to find her master who disappeared. And Tressa is a traveling merchant traveling the world to learn the trade. So there's eight different people you can learn from. Now, they all learn different skills and various things like that. But what's crazy is that in this game, that they have destinations where you would see where it would seem like they would cross paths with each other but they don't um so for example just a quick example uh Hannett's hometown of a place called Duskborough is actually the final destination for Cyrus but you would think that they would cross paths cross paths at some point but their stories don't intermingle with each other like that. They have traveling banter, you know, they talk to each other on the road, but they don't have their stories don't really mix, you know, and quiet is kept. There's a follow up game called Octopath Traveler 2 where they actually seem to fix this, where the characters actually have, you know, stories that cross over with each other. So that's going to be cool to see. Now, every ch every character has four chapters to their uh to their story and in this game grinding is a must because there's difficulty spikes that you know you end up being in places you know as you're traveling there's caves and things like that that you can use to grind but there's also areas that you're gonna have to that you may end up having to pass up or might accidentally travel into where the monsters are far beyond what your levels are and that's indicated by the danger level that you see that appears at the end, at, at the bottom right corner, anytime you travel anywhere. Um, let me see if I can 
show this real quick. See, notice that when you travel somewhere, it has the danger level. The danger level here is 11. But if you go elsewhere, the danger level might shoot up to like 45 or something. So you really have to be careful where you go um, and how far you uh, travel if you're going to do certain uh, people's storylines. You're going to end up crossing over into those dangerous areas. So it's important for you to grind in this game more than anything. Now, of course, there's weapons and things like that that raise and lower your stats. In this game, there's skills you can learn and uh, things of that nature. And uh, you can equip those skills to your characters. Now, in this game, every character, there's like eight jobs based on the default jobs of the eight characters in the game. And each of the characters can switch to a different job that can increase you know their stats in different ways based on how you want to play them um you know for example with primrose her default uh job is a dancer and she uses daggers and uses uh abilities that buff the um that can buff the team or her teammates uh that can make them stronger or increase their defenses and things like that um and say if you wanted to make somebody else a dancer once you find you know that there's 12 there's eight different shrines for the default secondary jobs um and if you wanted to make another dancer you could because the way the game reads it is like okay primrose is a dancer by default but somebody else can add the second job of a dancer as well right and learn the same skills that primrose has in the support in the support skills as well but once that one person adds that secondary job nobody else can be a dancer after that because it's locked you know so you can only have one additional person with the same job basically now on top of the eight default jobs and shrines there's four advanced jobs which you see the characters have right here um there's a sorcerer a war master, a rune lord, and a star seer. Now, every job has a certain amount of weapons they can use, and by switching job classes, you can see, you know, you can add to, you know, there's some people that have default jobs that only let them use one weapon, and by switching them over to a different class, you can increase the amount of weapons they can use, as well as their stats that may benefit them in the long run. So, that's something cool. Uh, Overall, I really like the game. It, it's that traditional RPG feel that I never really uh, felt in a while. You know, most of which in part I haven't played too many RPGs uh, like this. Too many turn-based RPGs. Um, and the battle system is cool as well. Let me see if I can go to the battlefield real quick and just demonstrate how this works. I'm severely overleveled for this place, so... <laughs> it, the battles won't even feel like battles the thing is just a demonstration let's just walk around this is danger level 11 and let's see if we can get a match or something like that well, you know what I gotta take off one of the job skills hold on let's get this thing. that's basically it. we can take that off just put on There we go. Okay. So way the battles work, you notice the little dots that's going above their head. That's what's called BP. Now every turn you don't use BP, you gain another uh, point of BP skill. So let's just go to defense right here. No, you don't. Now 
notice how the BP went up. Now what the BP is for is that you can go and you can use them by pressing right bumper or R1. I don't think this game is on PS4 or anything like that, but right bumper. And uh, you can use it to charge up your skills to make them stronger. Now, I'm going to wait one more turn because I want to show you guys something. No. No, you don't. I think not. Over here. When you have three BP points, three battle points to use or more, you can once you unlock it, of course, you can go and you can uh, use the uh, use their divine skills, which is basically like their ultimates. And the divine skills, you know, it varies from character to character. Some of them um, take abilities that hit all the enemies and focus it on just one to do more damage to that one enemy. Some, one of them has a divine skill that takes a, an ability that only hits one and spreads the attack to war through all enemies on the field. Another, you know, and some of them is just attacks. So. For somebody like uh, so, so, so somebody with the sorcerer class, uh, you know the divine skill it um it increases the elemental damage. Uh, it causes the elemental damage done by somebody uh, that you apply this to 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 be critical. Um, or you can just use it, you know, to power up the regular abilities as well. You know, so. You know, something like that. But that's basically, you know, the strategy. Um, the regular attacks, when you use BP for it, it just increases the amount of times that hit. Normally, you only would, wouldn't attack, for example, normally wouldn't attack, you know, it just hits once. You add a BP to it. It does multiple hits. You can you can only max out to like four BP. So four attack, four regular attacks when you add uh, when you max out on the BP. But uh, you know that's basically how it works. And of course there's skills, there's items you can use as well. So uh, to get your you know, to, to work your way to victory and things like that. Of course, it grades you. You get items sometimes, and uh, BP as well. But um, as I was stating earlier, before I got sidetracked, uh, there's four additional, there's four advanced jobs. You know that I was talking about earlier. Now these shrines that you go to get these advanced jobs at, um, they're guarded by bosses that are extremely difficult. So I mean, the game recommends you to be at like level 50 or something. You know, I grinded to like 99, so <laughs> even at 99, it was still a problem, so I can only imagine. But there's ways to like beat them, because every monster has, if you notice, there's a shield at the, you know, matter of fact, let me run around a little bit, get the whatever I started. Let us fight with honor. Like you notice, every monster has like a shield on them and the little boxes are what they're vulnerable to so it could be a certain weapon that they're vulnerable to and the number on that shield is going to go down meaning that you're attacking their weakness and once their weakness hits zero then the monster breaks um and they're no longer able to attack for the remainder of that turn so this is a tactic that's really good especially if you're going against you know the main um bosses in the game and as well as the optional bosses that they have in the caves and things like that so that's the strategy you want to go with um, but outside of that like I said the game is really really good it's tedious but in many ways it feels rewarding because there's eight different stories you can you go through um, and uh, you know you learn about the characters you see their you see their stories and how they go about um, I think this ain't Dustball, it's Swarky. My bad. I said Dustball was handed to uh, 
hometown. It was Sparky, my bad. But, um, but still, the point I made earlier remains as far as that goes. And the character stories intertwining with each other. But I think the game is really good and, and very vast. Um, I think this was for free on Xbox Game Pass. So if you guys wanted to check it out, you know, go right ahead. Uh, as you're playing through the game and when you hit, hit a town where the next chapter will, for a character will start, you got the option of whether you want to jump into that chapter right away or do it later. Because um, the, oftentimes there's things you can do around the area. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is every character's like ability. So each individual character has an ability that they have that they can use so for example with primrose she has a lure which allows her to basically um i guess you say flirt with other people <laughs> in the that uh that, she, that, she, that you're able to talk to and she can add them to the team and that person can act as like a another party member you know uh and ophelia kind of has like something similar where it's called guide. In uh, you know, e every two party members have something that's similar to the other. Like for example, with Primrose, she has a lure, which basically uh, is her flirting, you know, to get people to join a party. Ophelia, she has guide, which is she, you know, uses the flame of whatever to convince people to follow her, almost in the same manner. With Ulbrick, he has challenge. He can challenge certain people. And in in, uh, if you notice in the villages and in the towns that you visit, you have certain people that are like standing in front of certain doors at certain houses. Oftentimes, the nun, those houses have like special weapons and things inside that you can get and give to your um give to your party members. So you would have to fight that person or challenge them with either Ulbrick or hand it because both of them basically have the same trait and uh just in order to you know you, you have to beat them in order to get them out the way so you can go into the building uh Therian, he has uh, the ability of stealing which allows him to basically steal items from uh people such as you see right here but at that same token tressa she has the the merchant ability or, or the buy ability that allows her to purchase items from people. Now, there's some items that you're just not going to be able to steal. Not because Therian isn't high level enough. Not because Therian's level isn't high enough for him to successfully steal anything. It's just that some items are like the forbidden weapons and personal items from certain characters that you're just not going to be able to take unless you pay for them. So, or unless you reach a certain point in the story for that character or in that chapter for that character uh, you have to be careful especially with like the stealing ability because or the scrutinize ability or the inquire ability that Alfin or um, Cyrus has because you only get so many chances to do these things so it's recommended that you save because the town in itself could start to distrust you and won't give you any information for any chapters or anything like that so you can redeem yourself by restoring your reputation at the tavern but it's going to cost you some money you know but yeah but all in all the game is great I think it's good if you ever want to try out an RPG that uh is going to have you do some work <laughs> Um, I would say try it out. It should still be free on Xbox Game Pass as of me saying this right now. If not, then uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's still relatively cheap on like Steam or Nintendo Switch, which is the original console it was on. But uh, yeah, so give it a try. But in my opinion, I think the game is good. Uh, I give it a thumbs up. You know, so try it whenever you get the chance. So thank you guys for watching. Peace. And I will see you guys next time for more gameplay.